this is Pat McDonald, your host for Vote for Vermont, where our tagline is listening beyond the sound bites. Ben Kingsley is with me tonight, our co-host and co-producer, Ben. Thank you, Pat. Are you? And joining us tonight is Representative William Botzell, who's Democrat from Pownall. Bill, welcome to the show. Nice to see you, Pat. We have Bill here because he is the chair of the House Commerce and Economic Development Committee, and they put out a incredible, if I may say, Bill, incredible bill on workforce development and we want to talk to Bill about that because what a great time to talk workforce development and especially my passion tech ed sure. so we're gonna powder you with questions here but first we always ask uh, our guests to tell a little bit about themselves and well uh, as um, Pat mentioned I had, I've been a legislator for 16 years I represent the town that is farthest from here Pownall and Woodford, <laughs> District Bennington won. And uh, for the first four years, I was on the Agriculture Committee. And for the subsequent years, uh, I was on the Commerce Committee. And for the last nine of those years, an odd number, but uh, that's because Warren and I switched at one oh. point, uh, chaired Commerce Committee. Right. And uh, that really became a, a deep interest and a real pleasure for me. So you know we're a citizen legislator. Uh, Lake Chur, and you're going to, I know you're going to get to it later, but I've made my career uh, as an artist, a visual artist, and I say visual not just to say, not just painting or sculpture or this or that discipline, but uh, more with a deeper interest of what is the placement, what is the, the communication with others, community, right. the value added piece of uh, that activity. You also wrote down the word performance um, as part of your of yeah. Avenue, and we're going to chat about that. <laughs> so I want to know what that means, but anyway. So um, do you want to jump right in? Yeah. Um, so as you mentioned, you know, uh, eight terms in the legislature, you've done a whole lot of things. In fact, that bill, the workforce development bill that we want to talk about, Yes. Um, some could argue that's been in the works for five years. Um, yeah. And, <laughs> and you probably be one of those people. Um, so what you know, what are the accomplishments you're most proud of, um, and why uh, have you decided not to run again this this term? Oh, uh, um, let's do the second question first. Sure. Deciding not to run is that I think every legislator makes sure to uh, you know work with their family. You aren't there on your own. You are there, especially when you live at a distance. It is only uh, the support of your uh, family. My wife Ruth. Um, so that's always a consideration. Um, I would add that to the fact that I am, uh, I'll be 73 at the end of September, and I have a deep interest in my citizen career. And I didn't really want to restart that at age 75. I thought I'd get a little jump on it. I also think that m you know many of the interests that I had in the legislature, and I didn't come with a long agenda. I came more or less to serve, to uh, improve both my communities in Vermont. That's the basic uh, oath that we take. Uh, I've done a good bit of it. Uh, I think also, you know, uh, there are other pieces that you always add, add to that. Um, I think uh, the long-term representative and long-term chair of the Appropriations Committee, Martha Heath, once said it very uh, simply. She said, basically, there's no real reason. You just know. You just know it's the it's right time. time. Mm. And uh, very fond of my committee, uh, you know, especially my vice chair, ranking member, and others, because we uh, set out to do the work together. And mm. we did do that. We did run it together. And I think I took responsibility, ultimately, but that was a uh, tremendous and uh, fulfilling partnership. So I think when you put those things together, that's part of it. You know. So you could have, I could have said that two years ago, four years, or six. So why at this point? Um, part, of a, part of it is, is the uh, current speaker. Uh, we came in together. We served on ag together for four years. Mm -hmm. And we have a very um, solid working professional and just friendship. And uh, I suspected that she would become the speaker, and I, you want to be there for your friends and to do the best you can to move things along. Right. That's great. Good for you, Bill. Yeah. I have to say, you have chaired so many workforce development 
study groups, committees. Yep. Um, I used to follow you faithfully on the uh, on TV. They would always have live and oh I yes. I mean, so I can't. I went back to look to how many, but there were so many. And I know this is a passion for you. As a matter of fact, this is really cool. Um, both Bill and Kevin Mullen, Senator Kevin Mullen, who's now on the uh, Green Mountain Care Board, they received the Vermont Agency of Commerce and C Community Development. They're the first recipients for the first Vermont Economic Advancement Award. That's really great because well, that, it's that what was, you've done. That was very sweet of the agency, and I think um, uh, my partnership with Kevin was a good one. We, yep, we right. knew how to fight, and we knew how to, and to because it's important. Right. You, you have to have the pieces and yep. come together. You know, I don't think people realize how important it is. It's like Dick Pembroke and Dick Mazza in transportation. Mm -hmm. Those two, on occasion, not so close, but, but they were really work close together. And if you don't work closely with your counterpart over in the Senate or vice versa, it doesn't go well. Well, you're and very you vulnerable. And Kevin were if you think you know all the answers, you're yeah. very vulnerable. <laughs> exactly. And, you and need, I'll let you know. You need the faithful right. uh, dialogue and working, do your best work together. Right. Well, we're going to talk uh, a little bit uh, later about the list of accomplishments you two uh, right. pulled off. And, uh, but I want to know, how did you go from artist to economic? And I would almost say you're an expert at this point. And why workforce development became your passion yeah. when you were an artist all of your life. Well, th there's all of this, um, people that, you know, oh, make, uh, you know, clarify your own thinking along the way. Uh, I think the, the biggest picture about why workforce, workforce development is that uh, when you are, have some responsibility towards what are we going to do in economic development, you want to look for something that is not only needed but broadly embraced. And uh, so often we have this uh, setup between uh, workers, management, management, workers, uh, you know, owners, uh, workforce, all along the line. But when we think about it, there's probably no group, if you put them together, that need each other more. Is that uh, no business is going to go anywhere without a first-rate workforce. Right. And there's Vermont's aspiration, there's so many historically, t to be first-rate. Right. To be one of the things that we truly can compete on. You know, and then uh, on the other side, you know, for the worker to have the skill set to enjoy the, the fruits of life, if, to, to use a corny phrase, but to be able to, you know, uh, see their kids move forward, to, have property to, if they so choose, to be able to, uh, you know, life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. Uh, it all stems from having really good work and workforce. Right. You know, why artists did in that is that um, the artists I admire most had a taste for hard work. We'll just start there. You know, that they weren't necessarily the most proficient artists. I mean, the, the, but usually their skill uh, was hard won. And so, and then, then that's also ingrained in one right. growing up or whatever, right. Right. Or, you know, apply yourself, always try to, you don't have to be the best at other people's expense, but try to, to be amongst right. those that excel. So all of those basic values have always been there you know, for me. You did mention all those things that we shared. So many of them I didn't, but you're probably thinking of CFED, remember? Yes, I have one. a whole laundry list here. <laughs> uh, 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 that was yeah, a good one. Right. But the start for me, I think, was when I came to the State House, I came as an artist. So I didn't come with an agenda. Right. It was open. Agriculture was a good one. I like to say tongue in cheek. It was the only committee with culture in its name. <laughs> culture. Excellent. Anyway, it's a fit. <laughs> but it is true because in that one really, once you get through the acronyms of understanding the pricing right, of right. milk, and right. it was a you know amazing group of people there my first two years, including Mitzi, who ah, was I there, that, and, yeah. uh, Representative Floyd Neese, Bobby Starr, Ruth right. Town, all this right. this pantheon of folks. Uh, Carolyn, Betty Nova, um, you know, you, you bond with those, uh, with the people. But you come to understand that Vermont is a working landscape. And, you know, I like to hike, other people like to hike. You go up on top of a mountain in Vermont and you see a working landscape. Right. You see towns, you see factories, you see fields. If you go to the top of a mountain in the Adirondacks, you see a beautiful, fantastic wilderness and the White Mountains in so many places. 
But I think our business model is the challenge of how can a uh, gorgeous piece of nature uh, move forward together, right. not overreach, work with what you got, and uh, be there for each other right. while preserving your own integrity. Yep. And that's so I agree. those kinds of that's things are trick. where I come from. That's really interesting, and that's something that throughout the history of Vermont, um, we've always struggled to find the balance of you know economic development versus a working landscape mm -hmm. and and how those two things mesh. I mean um, for a number of years logging was the biggest industry in the state and to the point where we clear cut mm -hmm. almost the entire state mm -hmm. um, logging and uh, and then uh, when the when the trees were gone uh, we looked for another industry that we could use on this landscape and we turned to sheep farming. That's right. Um, and then as the trees grew back, you know, the pastures moved back mm -hmm. down into the valleys and, and we adopted mm -hmm. uh, milking and agriculture in the traditional sense now, um, you know, with dairy and, and other uh, pursuits. But it's an interesting, you know, I think we've, we've probably struck a, a decent balance at, you know, today in terms of, you know, how we do um, our working landscape. You know, we have... Yep cutting patterns for uh, logging that are that are sustainable right. that mm -hmm. you know maintain the integrity of the landscape um, and we have farming practices that generally are are pretty good although we have trouble with that mm -hmm. too in, in certain circumstances and um, you know and and now we have uh, a huge booming tourism industry that's built around mm -hmm. um, that's built around mm -hmm. the trail networks that we've yeah. Yeah. developed through our yeah. woods, and yeah. and some would say that's even an economic uh, a recruiting tool. I mean, it's part of it. Yeah, it's still not number one. That's still not number one. Yeah, <laughs> fortunately. Mm. It, so here's uh, just one or two things that I would reflect on. Um, you know, from what you said, I'm glad you mentioned forestry. When I came to the st uh, state house, forestry and foresters were not considered. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. one of the, the doorways for me was when S Speaker Gay Symington asked me oh, yes. to chair the Rural Economic Development Working Group, right. which I did for a number of years. It was a that. fabulous education for a group of us that went forward. One of the initiatives was we want forestry on the Agriculture Committee door. And it was a much bigger, now it seems like, why not? It was production forestry. We understood that environmental services forestry would stay with natural resources. But that group also was the, some of the early force around broadband, mm -hmm. too, to get that out there and any number of pieces. Uh, and then that, of course, led to CFED. Right. And the importance of CFED is that we established four goals for the state of Vermont. And I remember talking to uh, Mike Obahoski once, and he said, well, if they're so good, put them in statute. So we did, and, and mm -hmm. one of them is said that basically a preeminent workforce is important as well as infrastructure, mm -hmm. you know, and that includes social infrastructure sure. and also being a flexible, nimble government and also finding your own niche. And uh, people see those we visit on, they're very broad, but they hold up. Uh, but the workforce piece, that's the one that touches the people. And that's where right. the people mm -hmm. make their state. I think it's interesting because um, the, the governor and um, the Agency of Agriculture and the Forestry mm -hmm. um, Department are all working on uh, VOSHA, which is the Vermont Outdoor Recreation, yes. I can't remember the whole, th the whole name of the title, it's a <laughs> long title, but, but their focus is bringing people to Vermont, not just for you know the recreation opportunities that mm -hmm. are here, but that's a major piece of it because of the tourism and the, and the dollars that they bring because they're going, they're coming here to stay at a state park, and then they're going to visit mm -hmm. a brewery, and they're going mountain biking right, or hiking or paddling, or they're going to a restaurant mm -hmm. and economic impact. Um, but also to use that as a recruiting tool to, hey, while you're visiting here, here are um, a bunch of job opportunities that are mm -hmm. available for people with your skill set, mm -hmm. um, and capturing them, and that is effective in a number of ways, um, and I've seen it work. I've seen it work where companies are using the outdoor recreation opportunities yeah. we have mm -hmm. to to attract people here from Boston, from Connecticut, mm -hmm. from New Jersey, from New York, um, and they're recruiting people here who are highly skilled workers with in in um, specific industries with 
uh, that bring revenue with them. Mm -hmm. They're bringing dollars here, um, and they're and they have, you know, they're creating jobs in the state, and that's an exciting thing to see. Remember, Dealer.com when they first moved here included ski um, packages mm -hmm. for they their, still do. They, yeah, for their to get and, and, and Dealer.com. And in California, grew up here. they do surfing, so it's yep. attracting the. The, the young people with all the technological skills and yet they're out on the slopes and well, on the waves. I think, That's great. you know, I'd say is I just hope we're getting more savvy about something that Vermont has always done. Because if you think back to mm -hmm. my parents and their interest in Vermont and how they introduced me to it, because uh, I didn't grow up here, and uh, the people they knew and what they did, it's the same story, but it plays out differently yeah. right. over time. Right. And I think it's that awareness of what are the opportunities here that make sense for us uh, that do not diminish the opportunities we're already working on. Let's say that can forest or whatever. But I have to ask, what's your favorite outdoors <laughs> activity? <laughs> Since uh, you've been on the subject so yeah. passionately. Yeah, the um, brewery is I enjoy all of it. Well, I can't, brewing is not really an outdoor activity, but <laughs> 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 um, no, I, I enjoy all of it. I mean, um, Mountain biking is probably my favorite, mm -hmm. uh, but I definitely enjoy hiking, mm -hmm. um, and uh, I definitely enjoy getting out on our lakes and rivers and mm -hmm. uh, enjoying the waterways that we have. And That's good. You know, mm -hmm. all of it. Is well, good. my favorite right now is uh, digging invasive plants out of the woods in my house, oh, below my house, and it's really good sport. It's good activity. You have to use <laughs> your mind. Yep. And you also have to know your plants. World, so yes. I'm, Big on uh, buckthorn be gone. Yeah, exactly. As, as well as a few other species. There are some plants around these days, not to get off the subject, but can cause you some serious pain. Uh, the parsnips? Yeah, the parsnips. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Whoa. Yep, you just have to know how. I've yes. gotten rid of that one already. Did you, right, so we okay. just uh, get back on track, the gentleman. <laughs> the reason I said, th uh, reason I said uh, beer is because yes. almost every show somehow microbrewery comes up. We, we <laughs> somehow we, it, works somehow it works into the, yeah. into the show. Good, good thing. Yeah. yeah, we're trying to get the microbrewery association to be on the, the show. And, Bring some samples. But if you're uh, listening. Yes, please, I've asked you a couple of times. So anyway, so I found an article that listed all of the things that you, along with the Senate, have done. I'm going to list them off, and maybe you can talk about some of them, particularly the last one. Uh, in incremental financing district, that mm -hmm. is huge. And it's still, that it's, was an last year's yeah, it's expanded. Big push. Um, housing bond to create 600 units of affordable housing. Expand the Vermont Small Business Development Center, good thing. Grow the downtown tax credit and reduce housing permitting burdens in designated centers and the infamous Bitcoin blockchain. Tom Koch was talking about Bitcoin one day at blockchain, a meeting yeah. and it went right over my head. But of yeah. all those things, I think the, the incremental financing district has I'm, really made an I impact. I can touch your two or three yeah, of them. Uh, that'd be great. You know, uh, TIF for one, that's a tough one because we do know, no matter what people say, uh, one way or another, there is a connection to the education fund from when you hold back. Right. And um, it's very hard for us, uh, I think, in our conscience to realize that when somebody doesn't pitch in, somebody else has to, to keep government well, right. uh, running. Even with all of our works on efficiencies, next steps, technology, there still is a shift. So you have to be very careful about how you do it. And I think we did a, a decent bill mm -hmm. of, uh, at the end. And that was as tough a negotiation to get to what the House would accept with the Senate and with my hometown yeah. <laughs> desperately oh, wanting Oh, really? It. Oh, that's, oh, that's a little pressure. <laughs> oh, it's OK. I live in Poundell, not Bennington. Oh, okay. But I, you, know, I, you always work with the delegation. So that's one. Um, one you did not mention. Ah is uh, what we did on first time home buyer. Oh, well. And the first time home buyer was, is that was Sarah Carpenter, who's now retiring right. too, brought to us the, the notion is that for young people to time, be in right. Vermont, yeah. to buy their first home, one of the biggest obstacle is the down payment. Mm -hmm. You know, in order to be able sure. to get the loan to do yeah, it. Right. So we wanted more money, we settled for a certain amount, then we came back the following year and we increased it. And the notion is, is those dollars ultimately will become a revolving loan fund. Oh, excellent. So it, it was really a sharp strategy, but think about it even more. In our desire for those that um, 
you know, are emerging with all sorts of financial pressures from post-secondary debt to right. uh, family, child care, et cetera. Uh, if you want to create stickiness, there's nothing like a home. Right. And the stickiness that we right. want is for people to have uh, and enhance and enjoy their properties. Right. So I think that was one of the best That's smaller great. bills um, that we did, and I really thank um, Sarah and others for bringing nice. that uh, uh, to us. Okay, blockchain. Um, do you know what this is? Yes, I do. I have, Tom was <laughs> trying to explain it to me, went right over my little yeah, head. Bitcoin, I'm not interested in. Okay. And the bill that we did that the governor will sign tomorrow yeah. on blockchain, oh. uh, it's a ceremonial signing. Of course, yeah. he had to do it earlier. What it does is it takes advantage of the technique of what's called a distributed ledger. And a blockchain is basically, if you put a piece of information in, it goes in a particular place and you can't remove it without other, anybody knowing about it because it's distributed in all of these various servers and places. Oh. So you can't just rip out the book and have a right. second book and right. put it in. So it's quite secure. So we know this is an emerging business form in Vermont. And what our bill did is, the way we did it is, one of the best strategies is to say, that's a good idea. Go out, do the work, and bring us recommendations, put them into statute, work your way through it, and see what passes. And that's what we did. Huh. DFR did a good job on that. I think we had the Attorney General in there, and we had uh, um, the Vermont, uh, the part of the bar, the business group of the Bar Association, Peter Early, Tom Moody, oh, or right, whatever. Right. Our first one, we had Carl Lissman, he's a, you know, the Universal Law Commission. Right. These are people who are not going stuff. to go yeah, wild. Right, right. They're going to get it right. And so, so the bill we did establishes two forms of business, and this is development and creation too, because part of the bill says is we want them to come back and say what forms of skill sets do we need to make this thrive. Oh. Because uh, you're going to need people who are, whether it's on the software side or on the accounting side, etc. One form is regulated, one is not regulated. The regulated one is by choice. So if you want to start a company in Vermont that handles people's personal information, that's really important to them, you know, that then you can get the benefit of DFR and their ability to regulate and make sure that you can keep the promises that you're going to keep. Mm. And weed out those that would expose you. So for a lot of people, just being able to handle your personal information, right. witness last winter, right. you know, th this could be an opportunity. And the other one is we put out there the ability to d do LLC. It's a blockchain oh, LLC. Right. And that's self-regulating because that's the basic law. Okay, Things go south, right. there's stab established processes. But that was a great example great. of the private side, the public side, and I think the, the, uh, an enlightened administration coming together to find a way. And we'll see. Yeah. No risk. Great. And we'll see how it goes. Excellent. Well, that's a good I've one. I've got to look into that. Well, that's a, yeah, hopefully yeah. people will take advantage of it. Well, that's what we think. But we know that um, the business group over in Burlington, they are putting the word out. And uh, I'm going to find out tomorrow how many companies have since July 1st have come on board or want to take advantage of it because this is emerging. When you watch the yeah, Super is. Bowl and right. IBM is, a tech, is advertising the IBM blockchain on the Super Bowl, you've crossed the threshold. Right, right, you know. exactly. Excellent. I have got to do more research. <laughs> that sounds really cool because when Tom was, I don't know where my head was at, but it wasn't with him. Well, so <laughs> Tom was he right. The, he Bitco hard on this, the right? Bitcoin thing, yeah. not so much. That has the possibility for taking advantage of people in a way that you know I don't like. Oh. It also uses way too much electricity as people race to get the, the right. Bitcoin. Right. But this other one is about secure records and how can we apply we them like that. And to give people security. Right. There's nothing worse when you hear the announcement of, of uh, you know, thousands of records have right. been um, no. hacked and at some store Especially that you just Especially when it's credit card in. records. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah, that's not good. So let's switch the time we have up to, to oh. two things. One is the bill, of course. Yes. Could you, could you talk a more about the bill and, and what it's intended to do and, and well, uh, I think its the importance? Well, I think the best overview of it is that, as I said, these things develop over time. Right. And um, 
This session, we completed the work of the previous session, which built on earlier initiatives. Right. Um, I want to just uh, basically you know, give my thanks to a few people. Representative sure. Michelle Coopersmith oh, right. learned, was passionate about this, and really um, rose the level of it while Schaap was speaker. Yeah. Um, in this session, and in the last session, uh, the two individuals in the State House, I think, really made a difference in saying, this is on the priority list. And one is Mitzi Johnson, the yeah, speaker, right, right. and the other is Tristan Tolino, who's on the Statewide Workforce Investment Board as oh, one of the two yes. House members. Right. And there's a great systems thinker, uh, and he also worked with, um, on the private side, Ellen Kaler from the Sustainable Jobs Fund, who right. really understands systems. So we said to the board, under you know Frank, copy his terrific right. oh, leadership of them, and yeah. understood that Ellen and Tristan and Allison Clarkson was in there, and the administration folk leaders, is that um, the legislature wants us to seize this opportunity. It matches up with what the federal government wants with the new WIOA Workforce Investment right. Opportunity right. Act. And also, we need to get our act together because they're saying, you're not doing such a great job. Once they see our plans, they say now, I believe they're saying, you know, you're a model. So now the point is, if we're going to do this, we need resources. And we should be positioned to, to compete su very successfully as a model for right. federal resources to do the work. And that doorway, as you remember, right, huh? that's the yes. doorway. Right, right. You know, those funds, that's the doorway. Right and to build a partnership. So the other big piece of it is that we noticed over my time is that we need to create the, the will and the pathways for uh, agency, commerce, community development, Department of Labor and Education, and others. Right. Human services right. is really big here. Right. Yeah, let's mention others. is to start finding ways to create what we would say, it, every, all the words in there, they're opportunity for Vermonters, right. really, ultimately, that are well thought out. So we're taking uh, the bill combined a lot of those recommendations, which is a three-year step-by-step talk to people in the field, bring back their wisdom, design something that can really fit individuals' lives and where they're going in conjunction with an education system, especially tech ed. And yes. <laughs> and keep moving. Um, I'm sorry we don't have three hours because no, no, uh, I we could talk, talk about it. Right. That all of us <laughs> right. really think um, it's easy to be passionate about because you're making a difference. Okay. What made the difference this year, Bill? Because you've been, you and I and I have been working on this a long time, and this bill is phenomenal. I mean, we're going to go over the parts in a minute, but what changed the attitude and, and the, okay. did they realize where we are um, economically? Everything in the House comes down to your committee. So um, the administration put in a bill that um, Representative Patty McCoy put in. And that's more or less the, uh, and both parts changed, the second half of the bill. Uh, Mike and I and others had in the fall asked them to draft all the first part about right. the State wor Workforce Investment Board. Right. That part is really the, the, the deeper thought strategizing. The second part is what are some things we can do now? Right. Returnships, that'll be an example right. if we get to that. Um, Linda Meyer mm. from Essex is right. passionate about this. Yes, she is. Okay. Yeah. Matt Hill worked at the Department of Labor. He's deeply passionate yeah. about it. Gina Sullivan really, really cares as ranking member uh, about you know, the same area in education. Uh, me, Mike, has always tremendously cared about tech education from his work with Eileen and others up in, in the north. Val Stewart came from education with a deep, deep interest in it. Right. Charlie Kimball jumped right in and caught right. on. You yeah. know, so you had a core of people who, s who said, we'll go through the drudgery of it all, we'll fight our way through it you know, to get a bill. And we had the support of the speaker, yeah. you know, we had the administration, we had uh, the assignment of Sarah Buxton, Jess Gingras, and the, the governor put yep. uh, Dustin in charge of it in his office. We didn't see him much. Yep. This was a relatively new portfolio for him. Yep. But Sarah had really dove in, and Jess knew it all. Good. And we just decided that we're going to get through the, um, the differences, and Good. we're going to make a bill. 
right. and the Senate uh, waited for us to do it first. And our great ally in the Senate on this one was Allison Clarkson. Oh. She had been in the House. Yep, of course. She's on she the knew. State Workforce Investment yep. Board. She's a really good strategic, smart thinker, good in words. Right. And so when we came to settle the bill, uh, as the Senate agreed that Allison and I could go and work out the difference and bring it back to the entire conference right. committee. Right. And we had a very interesting conference committee because we had the chair of appropriations from the Senate and the chair of ways and means from the House Whoa. along the big guys with girls. <laughs> two of the core policy right. people. And they agreed, and they were there because there's always you know, money and there's not much of it in this right. bill. Right. And it, it was a very collegial uh, uh, settling of that bill. Excellent. Great way to sort of end the career, Bill. I think it's, I said, excellent for him. Good job. Go out with a win. Well, yeah, that was a win. That was amazing. We aren't going to go there today, but no, some no. of my real favorites were the consumer protection bills because they made a difference. Vermont, and this is important for those who care about business, Vermont is one of the only states, it may be the only state, where a business is defined as a consumer, so it comes under the consumer protection statute. I've heard oh. that somewhere before. Oh, yeah. That gives us that. a tremendous advantage to have a level playing field amongst small businesses and big businesses and to make sure Great. that the over this year, all we did basically is dealt with Silicon Valley, who become the new heavies. Right, whether right. it's Uber or whatever, right. oh, and Uber. make sure some of our smaller ones, and they're small on all sides, could really work. Great. So there's an awful lot to it, but I, I'm getting you off no, track. No, no, I don't. No, that's okay. Because actually, I was thinking that'd be a great show to do. Because I know a little bit about it, but what a what consumer a consumer protection for yes. businesses. Yes. Businesses and individuals. What's the difference? We all have to earn money. Some of us do it uh, yeah, in one corporate form. Talking. Others do it through lending that's time, great. skill, energy to others. That's great. That's Let's great go idea. through some of the details of the bill okay. I think is on the next, just because I, you've got some great stuff in here. And of course, when I worked at the Department of Labor, I'm glad to see some of the changes you've made. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think I it's mean, time, Pat, as yeah, you know no, more than most. Time. <laughs> this is uh, the evolution of this bill is something I followed for several years yeah. now. And, uh, um, and it's uh, something that Campaign for Vermont, which Pat is uh, the chair of, President of the board has been supportive of um, for a number of years, specifically for a lot of the reasons that we've talked about. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, right. this is um, something that, from an educational perspective, just makes a, a whole lot of sense. Uh, something we know we need in our state. In fact, if we look at the last three or four years of um, Department of Labor data, it's very clear that the jobs are there, yep. the skill sets are are, oh, nice. are what we need to work on. Right. Um, yeah. Invest in your people. Investing yeah. in our in our people getting more engagement in mm -hmm. our um, in our workforce and there's some creative ways to do that. There's two ways you can get more participation. Either you bring people in or you retrain people that are in in your workforce or are partially employed to get them fully employed or have you know stop looking for a job for some reason or dropped out no, of the workforce. There's a third strategy but we'll get back to that. <laughs> That's <laughs> perfect. That's fine. <laughs> um, and and so you know increasing your your labor force participation and getting them the training skills mm -hmm. that they need. Um, so what you know what was the biggest? Uh, we've been talking about technical education. This is I know the one that you're you're passionate about. What was the thing this year that pushed it across the line yeah, from for the technic technical education from piece the of tech it. end? Well, I think. Um, in a way, you've answered your question because you said you've been following it for five years, and <laughs> things have their time. Uh, I think a lot of it was the engagement by the Department of Education oh. along with labor and ACCD because of necessity, you mm -hmm. know, necessity, mother of invention. Um, the Department of Education has been so what would I say, uh, had so many things to deal with, no child left behind, whatever, et cetera, so that working on all of these other pieces that were also emerging, the career pathways, the personalized learning plans, you know, in the face of resource challenges, because we all know what the property tax issues are, um, and in the face of, as well as resource issues, is that an old setup that treated um, what the accounting for the value of students in your school system, the difference between tech 
and regular education. Mm -hmm. There was a disincentive there yeah. for people to go into technical education. Right. And as you can see in the bill, is that you can't unwind that right away. You know that um, you know my peer, David Sharp, as chair of the education committee, he dearly wanted for years to do this work. But every year, really? the other issues politically Not would come along. Because yeah, right. right. Dave Sharp is a career technical education right. guy. Right. Yeah. You know? And our governor went to UVM to become a tech ed instructor. Did you good know Good for that? him. And good for UVM yeah. for training people to be tech ed <laughs> yes, in, exactly. instructors. Yes, exactly. That's why he went to UVM. Rather than other so pieces. He'll love this. So that, you know, the, I think the, the will and the interest is always there. Things emerge at certain times. But the tech ed piece, a lot of it is that, um, when you dive deep into it, it's easy to find the critical analysis. Are the career counselors directed people okay. in that direction to mm -hmm. the degree that they could yes. because they're dealing with so many other issues? Exactly. You, know, the, you know, really the nitty gritty engine room stuff of, of how it works. Um, are the principals and the school board seeing that this is important for their communities? Are the businesses truly involved, or are they just expecting right. people as products to sure. be delivered? Right. Right. They're exactly. shifting in that way. All of these things so are right. actually, uh, I think, um, you know, awareness to, that are leading to opportunities. Right. And it's not like, oh, we, you did, you know, the blame thing doesn't matter here. But as people come together, um, previous administrations, you know, right back, and the one you work with, the right. Douglas administration, the Shumlin administration, they all kept taking steps, defining workforce as being preeminent need of the works that have, have been done in all of our administrations is uh, being able to do what you can. But then we also often get bogged down in some of the really important fights. They take up time and energy, and they're important, so you can't dismiss them. Uh, so also with tech ed, I think there's a, an emerging understanding that the tech ed supervisors, coordinators amongst themselves can um, do more work together, mm -hmm. strengthening it, because they're uneven, right. in a sense. Yep. Different sizes of schools, different Correct. techniques, things along that line. And their unevenness might be that what they're doing here is excellent but small, and here it's excellent but, but big, but missing this small. So, there's, so this is where the Statewide Workforce Investment Board comes in. I think there's some background on that that's important. Mm -hmm. um, I th remember that when Governor Scott first came in, his first idea uh, that he put out there was we're going to merge Department of Labor and ACCD. Right. right. And as you know, that met for whatever reasons, a uh, tremendous amount of not so sure we should look at this. When you think about it and look back, look in the rearview mirror, uh, putting faith and skill in the, work the state workforce investment board, as well as being a resource strategy, gives you a group that is insulated from um, who happens to be sitting in the governor's chair. Right. And it doesn't matter who's the governor, right. you know, and they are very importantly, uh, um, they have to be 50% plus one business yeah. there. The rest can be administration and letters and order gets a big board. And their reorganization into committees that are right. looking at some of these pieces and being charged with coming back and this is the risk we take. Do they have the capacity? What yeah. with busy lives and whatever. But the only way for them to deliver on that capacity is to, uh, right now, is to cheer them on. Yeah. And say, what are the resources? And this is something that has heart. We know you're the best at it. And we're going to ask you to step up. So you, you mentioned something that's interesting, and that's, um, and I think what you're getting at is, is that sustained focus on workforce development and economic development exactly. that transcends administrations. It should. And, it should. Yeah. and one of the it issues does. that we run into often is, you know, Department of Labor and you know, um, and you know, economic development are political appointees, right? And so those cycle through every six or eight years, and yep. um, and that's you know, six year period. If if you're lucky to serve in that role for that length of time, is not enough. To, it's just barely enough to really get to understand the role and understand the landscape and the yep. players, and um, and just as you're actually starting to get some of the work done, 
then that then it changes over and someone else is in that role. That, yeah. the, after the, and that leads to the point of is the term for the administration the right length and all of that kind right. of thing. Right. But setting that aside, when you look at the people who step into the seats as they carry over from administration to administration and different roles, some of them are, doesn't matter who you work for. You know, that there's some that have worked forever for both. Right. The right. knowledge stays there at the next right. level. Right. Um, the refresh button has its virtues in a sense. Uh, so it's not so much that, I think. Also, you have a new governor comes in and they can't be the master of every single portfolio everywhere. And they learn as they go. And they say like, oh, and they adjust as well it's what we want them to do. Right. I mean, right. Legislation wants us to adjust and to move forward. Uh, and it's that, and yes, there's lots of noise around it, and this, and I know, shame on you, oh, glory on you, <laughs> oh, as you know. Yeah. But uh, I'm not going to ask Pat to tell any stories. You worked in administration. I did. And we have to understand that within administration, there's rivalries amongst the silos. There has to be. Some of them Is are productive, and some of them are counterproductive. And some of them are hierarchical, and some of them are just, that's a really smart person. You know, I'm going to listen to them. And that's just human, it's the same thing in the state yep. house. There are rivalries amongst right. House and Senate, amongst committees, amongst I mean, all of that. We just have to harness those rivalries, and we have to rise above right. uh, the sense of the personal. You know, we yep. do the policy to the best of our ability, the politics to the sense of, you know, making sure we're taking care of each other and the personal there's no place for it i know it's i insightful. testified a bunch of times but i worked for 20 years for a swiss company in yes. new york and over in switzerland my company was on the board of directors of the tech ed uh, center there along with nestle sandoz hoffman laroche and they they were so active in the tech center and when i would go over there to bring back graduates from the tech center you would think I was bringing back Harvard and Yale graduates because the people in my company that were from Switzerland knew the value of these people and what they could bring to the mm -hmm. table. And I was like lauded with, oh, look what she did. And, um, uh, and I never understood why we never got the benefit of tech ed. Some kids don't do teacher student well. I, I block out, I, I have to do stuff with my hands. And, that's, and, our, and our businesses for years have been begging yeah. For tech, mm -hmm. for technical people. I think too. You don't get it. It's a great opportunity there, and uh, you know I'm, I'm with, so you. I, with you. I, for a number of years, I would go to the Skills USA banquet. Those who don't know Skills USA, oh, it's a group in every uh, tech center and school. They come oh, together, right. they compete, right. they go to oh, Kansas. Yes. Right. We win awards, we do well. Um, and I was remember just sitting down with a couple of people, I think from my school. I said like, oh, what's up for you next, or whatever. And it says like, oh. I'm deciding between MIT and Princeton. Well, they do. You know. For they have this education, they go <laughs> on. Yeah. At the they same do. time, you yeah. know, like uh, w what we're hitting on is that the inquisitiveness of young minds and the opportunities right. for them, we should be the best we can on alignments there. Right. You, you, uh, and what you let me know about earlier, you want to talk about apprenticeships. Yes, I do. Yes, this is again. another yep. basically underperforming area uh, where it works, it works well, but it's time for the, let's take a look, let's do better. Uh, the obvious things are in Vermont, we have certain approved apprenticeships and other ones not so much that the federal government approves. Mm -hmm. Well, let's take a look and see which one of those makes sense for us to right. do and let's do it, let's look at a little market demand. Let's not worry about stimulating the market and right. saying this might be right for you. Uh, but there, the person is actually getting paid, learning a skill, moving forward, and addressing our real need of, um, you know, my plumber just retired. You know, that's, I'll take it back to the, <laughs> yeah. oh my gosh, what do I do now? Yeah, right, exactly. You know, oh, fortunately wow. my car mechanic is young and went to the tech center, yeah. it's terrific. Yeah. But you know, it's, it's that world yeah. and, and it plays out across the boards. Because really what we're in, Pat, in, in my opinion, is that um, the world is a competition for human capital. And you get right down to it, basically. Yeah. And not to reduce the soul of a person in any way, but that the people who would be 
in my opinion, most delighted by fulfilling themselves in Vermont, you want to make it so that you're reducing obstacles. Right. And one right. of the obstacles, I think, is our, uh, that our education system is terrific, but there's some value-added pieces that need to increase a little bit. Right. And I think that's a lot of what yeah, you see in the great. bill, too, with this alignment with the Department of Ed's work uh, and others on career pathways and individual learning plans of, you know, try to get that relationship between the educator, the educator, the student, and the family, and then do what you can. And we can't do everything, of course, but we can certainly have the will to aim in a direction that makes sense. Right to those individuals. Well, I was thrilled when you mentioned that the Department of Ed is, was, was lauding the tech ed and, and that we should do something. I was, they, when I worked there, they, they were all about college. It was all about college, and the tech ed was something else. Yeah, so, well, you know, I think, um, I'm trying to remember, the, there was a terrific person, he went on to Washington um, uh, and brought a lot of these ideas. Richard Cade? No, not Richard Cade. R Richard? No, this, he wasn't at the head of it. No. Oh, he wasn't, because one no, of them Richard went, went over to UVM. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. yeah, but, um, and I'll forget, remember later, and then Heather Boucher took his seat. She's done a lot of work in this area, um, but, you know, maybe it was two years or four years ago, we passed a bill that said DOL, ACCD, and education, you have to sit down, education, you're in the driver's seat, and we want you to bring back recommendations Good. on tech ed, Good. which then led to the next step. And that's the way legislation works. That's great. Well, it was worth the wait. This is an amazing bill. Well, um, we, what we, else would you like to talk I, about? I, I would say, Pat, that the jury's out until we see it's hopeful, but we should be positive, reinforcing, and helpful. Yeah going forward because we've asked a lot of people to do a lot of well, really conscientious a, a work. Campaign for Vermont, we're putting out a resolution and having a lot of businesses sign Terrific. that we are behind this bill. And um, there was a lot of, um, there weren't so many shalls and, and will, there was sort of, the, the other words, may. And There's the, a lot of so, may. Well, that was negotiation with the Senate. <laughs> I had a lot. I, so I so confess to more shalls than they <laughs> accepted. But, um, <laughs> but I just, I worry. And uh, when I talked to Pat Moulton that we want to make sure the Department of Labor has the, the support it needs to get this done because most of it falls Good. on the Department of Labor. And um, uh, when I remember yeah. when I was there, yeah. it might have been hard to pull off a lot of this stuff even though the, the intent and the passion is there. Yeah. But um, anyway, because you know what somebody told me, um, and I think I heard the governor talking, and they're talking at, at B BTC to start this conversation with kids younger mm -hmm. like in i don't know what grade fifth sixth grade because when we used to have guidance counselors you're probably too young we actually had guidance counselors now we have social guidance counselors slash social workers because they're so wor they're so dealing with the problems are deep. i mean the immediacy of some of these kids mm -hmm. problems and i'm not saying they shouldn't do that but we used to have actual guidance counselors where you go in and they talk to you about tech ed and about you know what are you interested in mm -hmm. and and if we can get the kids thinking about it, it's cheaper shorter and you when you graduate you you can make a serious amount of money so and you don't have the the bills the that debt. you have the debt uh, loans yep. and i'm looking for the recommendations and uh one thing i would look for though i won't be in the legislature are the skills they learn transferable mm. as there you, go. Uh, you know the ever advancement of industry right. doesn't just offshore people, right. which is a cost shift onto everybody else. Yep. And that's the way we work. One of the pieces that our committee, we, we were just so strong on and went for as much as we could because we had child, was getting it down to the middle school level. Yes, oh, great. And uh, Mike Markov was passionate about that. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Good for Mike. Yeah, that's as great. well as others. Should we we'll only have nine minutes left, and I wanted to change the topic real quick. Is there anything else we should talk about? We could do another hour on the bill itself. and, and um, um, uh, You mentioned the campaign for Vermont. I'm glad to hear yes. your champions. Um, we, I'm very we would pleased like to chat with you, actually. That about the that. business roundtable yes. and their piece, they had been working on this piece, and instead of saying, oh, no, don't do that, yep. You know, they said um, it'd be very helpful for them in their continuing work, which is partnership, I think, all along, is that, that the recognition's in the bill. Great. I think if you had in there, the natural partners here go far deeper than that. They go into the local yep. workforce boards. 
one of the key things in the bill that actually was a bit of a fight is we said we want you to listen to the people working on the ground in the trenches oh and they know bill and they know. that is you know from yeah. being a secretary right. that that's a little risky because when you ask the question you got to listen to the answer <laughs> and sometimes you have to follow through and that because they know yeah. what they're talking about um so there is that but yeah. i think that they know so much yep. every week i go to um no, every month I go to a group that's put together by my community college, my tech center, Department of Labor, Wendy Morse is terrific. The superintendents are there, the BC, the, the industrial corporations really? there, the planning groups there, the colleges are there. Nice. And we sit down and talk about what are the things we can do. And right. they're the ones, they're doing so many things that are terrific in terms of um, career fairs and that whole group right. and then right. vetting new ways of doing it. and. Are, and the, the thing is, people like to go to that meeting, yep. and they show well, they up, good news, and they yeah. leave yeah. with a sense of accomplishment. Yeah. Nice. All right, we're switching gears, because <laughs> you have to talk about this, your artist life here. Where's all my notes? Um, <laughs> I, we're going to show a couple of Bill's works at the end of the show. So this is something you have been, you are a visual artist who has created works, I'm reading this, for museums, art centers, galleries, sculpture parks, arboreums, abore, did I say that? I know it's arboreum. Mm -hmm. School grounds, parades, and town squares, as well as rivers, forest fields, old mills, and churches. My goodness, Bill. Yeah. That's great. Where did you do most of your so work? Here's the first place I'm going to start. And I say this sincerely, but also with a smile. You know, I think public policy is an ultimate art form. Oh, that's cool. I agree I, with that. I, that's because you want policy. <laughs> yes, yeah. it, it's that. And I realized the skill set I got through the arts was directly applicable. What do you do, especially if you work collaboratively? Right. And that's the performance well, part. You're interested choices, in that right? rather than thinking. the glory of the individual right. artist. So you have a group of people in a room. The only thing you want of them is to do their best work together good champions, be good skeptics, but build a culture that is reliable nice. for all of our visitors. That's a, and to communicate it. And I think uh, basically when you look at a, a cultural artifact or thing, it, it's the same thing of people coming together, whether it's a choir or it's a group, to communicate something that is meaningful and valuable in their life. Nice. My pathway has been um, to I went to New York for a few years. I made a choice. You can be an urban artist, or you can go out and see what rural's about. I grew up suburban. That wasn't going to happen, because you know, <laughs> I said one way or the right. other. I felt the urban. I would be. Uh, it would be less unusual and less risk taking. And I knew as I live within my means, I'd be okay. So I did that. Um, so the performance part. Uh, as example, I've often worked with a wonderful movement artist, dancer named Meg Cottom, oh. and we actually were the millennial artists for Kansas in the year 2000. The mm -hmm. NEA sponsored, they put one in every state, and you know, you went to a mill where you were identified as capable, and the states chose you, and we were out there for an in-depth four-month community residency. Wow. And if you want something to new to champion, I would say makers and residents are brought into our communities. Don't call it artists, call it makers and residents. And they have the skills to work with our maker spaces or whatever they do in the community and they, they define what will illuminate nice. and advance the community. So we did this there and we listened really hard to people and one thing we noticed is they said that when people come to our town, they have nowhere to go. So we listened to people, we told their stories, we collected them, we put them at the end into a guidebook of places you could visit on your own. Um, we did a school bus tour with these fabulous fun performances. We used school kids, we did everything. Cool. So that was performative right? and that it was also collaborative, just to give one example. Nice. Yeah, you surprised me. I think it's great. <laughs> Makers in residence. That's it's a thought, phrase, makers and, and I would say that that is, there's an opportunity there, and it could be a Vermonter goes to another part of Vermont yeah. and brings, and they have the support for a time to focus deeply on where that community is going nice. and their skill set. Well, I, I, what is the uh, Rural Development uh, Board? Because we went to Johnson one time to listen to people, but it wasn't just, it wasn't what, what you're talking about, it's a little more expansive about um, roads and, and how to 
deal with the, the culture of the this community. Is, it's kind of like um, what you're describing is kind of like somewhat similar to the um, the governor's yeah. uh, program to bring people here, place them in communities and maker spaces and um, get them started in, in doing whatever they want to do, but doing it here, right? Yeah. I think that is, uh, yes, there is a, yes. a relation to that of let's make sure that our talents, you know, yeah. work together and make sure that it is focused and in depth enough to have impact mm -hmm. and let the communities and that person you know, make do the match. You know, somebody's got to do the matchmaking, but let them define it, do the oversight, and I think you That's know, great. very unusual things can happen. Have you ever been to Dave Bradbury's? Um, uh, yes. Apprentice? Isn't that the most amazing Several place? Times. Yes. It is so much fun just to be there because you can yes. feel the, the the energy. It's just great. Yes. Yeah. Well, I did a show with him one time, but we did it on. We went there so people could see what he was what he was up to. So are you, in your retirement, are you going to pursue your artwork or get uh, on every committee known to mankind when they call I'm, you? <laughs> I'm a green light kind of person, um, but I, I want to put my, uh, you know, my skills for me, for Ruth, uh, you know, where they make the most sense right now. And, but, uh, so I don't really have a sense of it should be this, that, or the next thing. Uh, you, know. Uh, you know, I think uh, Vermont is full of amazing, wonderful people. And well, you're down in a beautiful part of the country. That's a beautiful part it, of the state. It is. It is beautiful down there. It is. It is very nice. So, do you have any other questions we can? Uh, I, I think um, you know we talked a little bit about. Or we talked a lot about the things you've accomplished in the legislature. Yes. Um, what are the things that um, either you haven't, you feel like, are still in progress? Um, or the things that you hope uh, others will pick up and carry forward? Well, the workforce for one. Yeah. I, I would definitely recommend that they um, continue and build the partnerships that have been forged, especially with public and private partners that are outside, and that the legislature becomes a sounding ground for people to oh, uh, have a reliable partner. Uh, can't do everything, but it'll do the best it, it can. Um, I know that uh, committee members that are uh, hopefully successful in coming back, that's where they're at. I think um, both Representative Marcotte and Representative O'Sullivan, or uh, Representative Hill, Representative McCoy, I think she wants to go to leadership. You know, the committees will be very different, but that core of interest is there. Another area I think it's really important for commerce to stay on top of is protection of people's personal information. Oh, yeah. yes. It's going to be a big one yeah, this year's. year. So many of our bills had to do with technology huh. in so many different ways. And so many of the controversies were with Apple or Uber or other ones. And we held our ground. And we didn't diminish them, but we said basically, you know, you just you got to take care of uh, those that you're working amongst, right. not just yourself. Right. Um. Well, we really thank you very much. It's a pleasure great having pleasure. this chat with you. It's great, Ben. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you for tuning in. Um, we'll see you next week. And in the meantime, keep listening beyond the sound bites.